Fighting games are fun, but generally hard to get into. In fact, many players are too intimidated to even play them. So the common trend that many developers have been pushing in the newer games is the simplification of their mechanics. While simplification in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing, the approach the developers seem to have taken hasn't exactly worked. Fighting games at their core are very simple games. They're just one vs one slugfest where you either defeat your opponent or lose yourself. Within three minutes you have experienced the entirety of the game. Sure, you can pick another character or fight a different opponent, but at the core, you've experienced the entire game already. What's going to keep you coming back for more is the wealth of depth usually found in these types of games. Series of quick decision making combined with special moves and combos that look freaking awesome should make each game exciting and different. You should also be able to learn something new about the game every time you pick up your controller to play. However, by simplifying these games, developers run the risk of removing the depth with it, leading to a boring game completely figured out by the community at large with one or two optimal ways of playing it. Removing mechanics to appeal to a larger casual audience is a good way to make your game worse while not solving any of the problems you're trying to address. The approach should be more directed and thought out, cause at the end of the day, having more options available to the player is always preferred since it allows for more potential outcomes during each match. It is very possible to simplify a game's mechanics without limiting the options given to the player. A very recent example of this would be the removal of Dead Angle in the new Guilty Gear. For those of you unfamiliar with Guilty Gear, Dead Angle was an invincible move that knocked opponents away from you by pressing forward plus any two buttons and spending 50 tension. Instead, Roman Cancels now function as a Dead Angle in addition to all the other things Roman Cancels can already do. This makes it so the player only has to learn one mechanic instead of two. Having less mechanics to learn is always going to be easier than learning more, obviously, but it also leads to scenarios like this. Let's say Johnny Newberton learns how to use the Roman Cancel, but only knows about its normal use for the time slow and combo extensions. Then Johnny goes online to play some matches and comes across Joe Schmo over here who uses the Roman Cancel as a dead angle, knocking him back. Johnny may be a little confused at first, but will recognize the Roman Cancel animation. Since Johnny already knows the input for a Roman Cancel, he might try to use it as a dead angle later since he saw Joe use it this way earlier. Now Johnny has another tool available to him that can hopefully improve his level of play, all because two mechanics were simplified into one. The depth doesn't suffer since both choices are still there in the game and Johnny's left feeling a little bit better about his scrub ass self. Now, system mechanics aren't the only things that developers look at when trying to simplify their fighting games. Another common practice these days is the lowering of the execution barrier. Many casual players struggle with combos or command inputs such as quarter circle forward button or the Z motion for dragon punches. Many games have tried to work around this problem by giving more forgiveness or more time for players to chain things like specials into other moves like Street Fighter V removing one frame links from Street Fighter 4, but also just giving more time for the player to input the command in general. Other games have added features like auto combos to make new players feel like they're doing those awesome combos just like everybody else. Other games like Fantasy Strike have streamlined the process by completely removing command inputs altogether, assigning everything to simple button presses. Now it is completely possible to make a fully competent fighter like this that still maintains a good level of depth, but not every fighter should be made like this. That would be unfun. The player instead needs to feel like they are improving. While they might not be able to pull off insane combos or even struggle with command inputs, they have room for growth and it is always exciting to see yourself improve at something. If Johnny here is struggling with the DP input because the motion is just too weird for him, when he finally manages to pull that move off against another opponent, he's going to feel like a god. For a brief moment until his opponent wakes up and puts him back in the corner where he belongs. Now fighters aren't the only game genre that has difficult mechanics to learn. Other competitive games like Dota, League of Legends, and Overwatch all have difficult things to learn in their respective games, but they all have something very important that fighting games seem to be lacking, a proper matchmaking system. 
players in games such as League are given the opportunity to grow and improve because they are matched with players at their level. Yet in fighting games, it's not uncommon for a brand new player to go up against veteran players who've played over 10,000 matches and knows the game inside and out. How is a player who is still struggling with the most basic of mechanics expected to learn anything if they're too busy getting pub stomped by the experienced players? New players need to be matched up with other new players. Sure, there are discords and communities that can offer that sort of opportunity if you go looking for them, but you can't expect every new player to go out of their way to do this. The game itself should provide this opportunity. And I know there are other issues with online play that make it more difficult for proper matchmaking like bad netcode and low player bases, but matchmaking should be something developers prioritize instead of just tossing it in last minute and have it barely functioning. Cause after a new player Johnny Newberton gets his ass handed to him online, he's going to go offline to play and try learning the game in arcade mode or story mode if that even exists in the game, and since these modes barely have anything in them, Johnny will find himself bored within the hour, moving on to whatever other game catches his interest. Now this leads me to my final point. I do not believe that most fighting games need to be simplified in order to be more friendly to the casual consumer. Instead, it's the learning process that needs to be simplified. Like I mentioned earlier, going online to play against other players isn't going to necessarily be a fun experience for new players if they're just going to get beat so badly they can't tell what they're doing wrong. But currently in fighting games, they really have nowhere else to go in these games to learn. Sure, just about all fighting games come with training mode now, and newer games are implementing better and more in-depth tutorials, but you can't expect some casual new player who just bought the game because they think it looks cool to turn on the game and go straight to the tutorial tab, boot it up, and try to learn the nitty gritty of the game. No one enjoys tutorials. It doesn't matter how good the tutorial is. If you don't have to do it, chances are you're going to skip it and jump straight into the game. Developers in every other genre of gaming knows this. So what do they do? They implement the tutorial into the actual gameplay or story of the game so that players can learn while they're actually playing the game. Think about any game you've played recently outside of the fighting genre. Chances are that whatever you thought of had an NPC or some sort of text that pops up and explains how things work as you unlock new mechanics in the game as you're already in and playing and the more clever ones use the gameplay itself to explain the mechanics. Let's take a look at the game Indivisible since it's part fighting game anyways. In the game, you use characters to juggle and combo your enemies to death in a hybrid RPG slash fighting game style. In the beginning, it explains how to do this through an NPC and actual combat. It's straightforward and makes sense. A little bit later, the game then forces you to fight a boss that doesn't take any damage in the traditional way, you must reach a certain threshold of hits by comboing your attacks with your party before you can start damaging the boss. This makes you put into practice the things the game has taught. Other games such as Dark Souls run a masterclass on how to teach the player through interactive tutorials, introducing a mechanic right away and then throwing an enemy or situation at you that puts it into practice. So why can't fighting games implement this? Why not have a boss or a fight in a story mode where you have to hit a certain combo threshold to damage the boss? Or a fight where only special moves can damage the enemy? Or another fight that forces you to take damage unless you insta-block or faultless defense or something? These are very simple and basic things that can be done to teach the player the mechanics and make them feel more rewarded for learning them. This is the bare minimum that developers should provide for their players especially if they're trying to attract new players. Difficulty itself does not prevent a game's player base from growing. Games like Dark Souls and League of Legends are difficult games, but you don't see them simplifying them to increase their player base. The reason is that they both provide ways for their players to learn their mechanics. When players are taught and understand the mechanics of the game, they don't feel completely defeated when they lose during the learning process. Upset and angry? Maybe but they are much more willing to keep going and get better as long as they have an understanding of how things work. Fighting games do a terrible job of explaining how things work, 
and instead of focusing on improving things in this area, they focus on cutting out mechanics to simplify things instead. Now, I just want to state this one last time, but making a fighting game more simple is not always a bad thing. For the most part, Dragon Ball Fighters was a relatively simple fighting game, but it turned out really well and ended up having a good amount of depth to how you played the game. But not every fighting game should be made like this, especially when there's so many basic features fighters are missing compared to the rest of the gaming world that could really help out newer players. Us older players want to see newer players learn and love the games we play too, but not at the cost of losing things we love about those games. Thanks for watching. I know this topic of discussion has a ton of factors involved with it, and I did my best to try to address it the best way I could, but I'm sure I might have missed something. Let me know in the comments below if I did, or if you disagree, or if you just want to let me know what you think about the whole situation. I really love fighting games and want to continue to see them grow without sacrificing their quality. There are plenty of things we can do as a community to make these games better, and one of them is to discuss things like this to let the developers know our thoughts, as well as to support each other. We're all here to have fun playing some hype-ass fighting games, so remember that after all the trash talk and ass whooping, to help each other out so we can all become better players. I'll see you guys in the next one.